Hello, all praise to Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So this will be the next, I think it's number six in the uh, Jerusalem's Mystery, Mystery Babylon series. So I'm going to read uh, Jeremiah 50, 51 and a little bit of 52. And I'm going to read Lamentations 1, 2 and a little bit of 4. And this will be the last the last of the gathering evidence, I think, the last of the gathering evidence videos. So if you want to go off and read those things on your own, you don't listen to me read, uh, that's what we're going to be reading. And also I'm going to make, at the beginning, I'll just make one point so that you don't miss out. In Jeremiah 25 and in Jeremiah, I can't remember if it's 50 or 51, but we'll get to it in this one. There's a place mentioned called uh, Shashak. So it comes up in Jeremiah 25, which we read, I think, in the last video. Uh, then I took the cup at the Lord's hand and made all the nations to drink unto whom the Lord uh, had sent me, to wit, Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, the kings thereof, princes thereof. And then it goes down, you know, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and you know, Philistines, Eom, Tyrus, Zidane, all the places that are going to drink the cup of the wrath of the of God, the wine of the wrath of God. You know, that's what's... That's what it's talking about. And at the end, verse 26, And all the kings from the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world, which are on the face of the earth, and the king of Sheshach shall drink after them. So Sheshach, mentioned in what we're going to read, I can't remember if it's Jeremiah 50 or 51. So what is Sheshach? Where is Sheshach? It's interesting. So look here on, just looking on Wikipedia, Sheshach whose king is mentioned in the Hebrew Bible, Jeremiah 25, 26, is supposed to be the equivalent of Babel, Babylon, according to a secret model of writing practiced among the Jews of unknown antiquity, which consisted of substituting the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet for the first, the next to the last one for the second, and so on. Thus the letters, sh and whatever, it's a cipher. Its code is called the Atbash cipher. It was used to decrypt the city Shesh, Sheshak does not appear on any map, nor in any other documents, save the book of Jeremiah. And at the Atbash cipher was applied, and out of Sheshak came the word Babel. This, supposed, this is supposed to be confirmed by reference to Jeremiah 51.41. It's in 51. Uh, where Sheshak and Babylon are in parallel clauses. There seems to be no reason to doubt that Babylon is here intended by this name. And then a similar instance of this Hebrew cryptographic method occurs in Jeremiah 51.1, where Leb Kamai is code for Chaldea. So I thought that was interesting. So it's, and it's, there's another other sources as well for this, but I just thought it was interesting. So Sheshak, it means Babylon. It seems to mean Babylon or imply Babel. So it's worth keeping that in mind. As, as you read. So if you want to read, go off and read on your own. There you go. You've had that point. But okay, so. The Jeremiah 50 and 51, I guess it's, it's worth remembering history here. So there was a literal ba Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar was the king and uh, at the time of uh, Jeremiah writing here. And Babylon was the kingdom that was the first great, well, the, it was a great empire that controlled the world basically at the time. And God used Babylon to punish Israel basically. And so... What what's being talked about in Jeremiah fifty and fifty one is at least in part uh, what you know, something that happened at the time. But this is a it's an interesting part. So there, are, I mentioned in the last video, Revelation eighteen, how some of the things didn't really match up with Jerusalem, like the you know, all the the trade things and the the people on ships trading with the, the great city, which is Mystery Babylon. And I don't, I don't know that that entirely matches up with present-day Jerusalem. So I think, you know, perhaps that's a future fulfillment. Perhaps when the Antichrist comes, and, you know, assuming the Jews worship the Antichrist and he becomes a religious figure, and, you know, may, maybe things will change between now and when that prophecy will come to fruition. Maybe it will be the case that the merchants who trade on the sea... Uh, you know, in the ships and the sea, or maybe it's maybe it's symbolic of something else. I don't know, but there was a bit that I pointed out in Revelation 18, which didn't didn't really match up 100. percent And in these these chapters we're going to read here in Jeremiah 50 and 51, and a little bit of 52, it's also difficult to discern. I find it difficult to discern uh, what's being talked about. It's, it definitely appears to be the case that at least in some of the places it's definitely talking about the Babylon of antiquity. And then other places, it's not so not so certain. So it's just something to keep in mind as we look through. And I've, I've read a whole lot of things now about 
uh, a mystery Babylon and uh, well, about Jerusalem and then comparing it to mystery Babylon. And I do intend to do uh, an analysis type video uh, where actually instead of just reading scripture, I actually take the verses and compare and really match up and try to define things a bit better. And I'm looking forward to doing that. But and then we'll read Lamentations after that. So, which is also it's more clearly about Jerusalem. So we'll just get a sense of what's going on here. So I'm going to read a bunch of scriptures. So if you don't want to listen, you want to read for yourself. Jeremiah 50 to 52. And lamentate, read the whole of Lamentations. So Jeremiah 50. The word what, uh, that the Lord spoke against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet. Declare ye among the nations and publish and set up a standard. Publish and conceal not. Say, Babylon is taken, Bel is confounded, and Merodach is broken in pieces. Her idols are confounded, her images are broken in pieces. For out of the north there cometh up a nation against her, which shall make her land desolate, and none shall dwell therein. They shall remove, and shall depart, both man and beast. In those days, and in that time, saith the Lord, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah together, going and weeping, they shall go, and seek the Lord their God. They shall ask the way to Zion with their faces thitherward, saying, Come, let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. My people hath lost, hath been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. Some of we've talked about in previous videos, the, you know, the high places, the Axis Mundi, the places that you know the, the places that people go up and they, you know, and people tend to put the temples and things on hills. So he's talking about the people going from mountain to hill. It seems to be implying that they've gone from God to God. They've forgotten their resting place, which is Mount Zion, I suppose, and you're the true God. All that found them have devoured them, and their adversaries said, We, def we offend not because they have sinned against the Lord, the habitation of justice, even the Lord and the hope of their fathers. Remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans and be as the he-goats before the flocks. For lo, I'll raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country, and they shall set themselves in array against her, and from thence shall, be, shall she be taken. The arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man, and none shall return in vain. And Chaldea shall be a spoil. All that spoil her shall be satisfied, saith the Lord." So it seems to be talking about the, Med the Medo-Persian Empire, the ones who took over Babylon. So of course, after was it seventy years, that then the Jews returned from Babylon, and uh, the there was the next empire that came up, the Medo-Persian Empire came up and destroyed Babylon. So it seems to be what's being talked about here. Which is also interesting. So the nations of the north, that would be, I guess, Iran would be at least one of them. So it's interesting to note the retentions between Israel and Iran at the moment. Chaldea shall be a spoil, all that spoil her shall be satisfied, saith the Lord, because ye were glad, because ye rejoiced, O ye destroyers of mine heritage, because ye are grown fat as a heifer at grass, and bellow as bulls, and below as bulls. Your mother shall be sore confounded, she that bear you shall be ashamed, behold, the hindmost of the nations shall be a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. Because of the wrath of the Lord, it shall not be inhabited, but it shall be wholly desolate. Every one that goeth by Babylon shall be astonished and hiss at all her plagues. And it's interesting to note that Babylon, present day, in the present day Babylon doesn't really exist. Saddam Hussein did rebuild it a little bit, but I've looked at, I've looked at what's there, what I can see on the internet, and it's nothing really, and it's still not inhabited. So, uh, like, you know, I thought maybe it was going to be rebuilt. It would have to be rebuilt very quickly in order to fulfill the prophecies. Put yourselves in array against Babylon, round about, all ye that bend the bow. Shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she hath sinned against the Lord. Shout against her, round about, she hath given her hand, her foundations are fallen, her walls are thrown down, for it is the vengeance of the Lord. Take vengeance upon her, as she hath done, do unto her. Cut off the sower from Babylon, and him that handle... Handleth the sickle in the time of the harvest, for the fear of the oppressing sword, they shall turn every one to, to his people, and they shall flee every one to his own land. Israel is a scattered sheep, the lions have driven him away. First the king of Assyria hath devoured him, 
And last, this Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, hath broken his bones. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will punish the king of Babylon and his land, as I have punished the king of Assyria. And I will bring Israel again to this habitation, to his habitation, and he shall feed on Carmel and Bashan, and his soul shall be satisfied upon the Mount Ephraim and Gilead. In those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none. And the sins of Judah, and and the sins of Judah, they shall be not found, for I will pardon them who I reserve. It's interesting that because when the Jews went back to uh, Israel, they went back to Jerusalem. There was still problems there, and then they it was a bit of back and forth. And they did rebuild the temple, but they obviously went back to their bad ways, and you know they culminated you might say in, in in the bible with the killing of jesus and then the the killing of some of the uh, apostles after that so just you know it's hard to place hard to place the timeline is what i'm saying for i'll pardon them who i am reserve go up against the land of merathaim even against it and against the inhabitants of Bacod. waste and utterly destroy after them saith the lord and do according to all that i have commanded thee a sound of battle is in the land, and of great destruction. How is the hammer of the whole earth cast asunder and broken? How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations? I have laid a snare for thee, and thou art also taken, O Babylon, and thou wast not aware, thou art found and also caught, because thou hast striven against the Lord. The Lord hath, hath opened his armory, and hath brought forth the weapons of his indignation, for this is the work of the Lord God of hosts in the land of the Chaldeans. Come against her from the utmost border, open her storehouses, and cast her up as heaps, and destroy her utterly, let nothing of her be left. Slay all her bullocks, let them that go down to the slaughter. Let them go down to the slaughter, woe unto them, for their day is come, the time of their visitation. The voice of them that fleeth and escape out of the land of Babylon, to declare in Zion the vengeance of the Lord our God, the vengeance of his temple. Call together the archers against Babylon, all ye that bend the bow. Camp against it round about. Let none thereof escape. Recompense her according to her work, according to all that she hath done, do unto her. For she hath been proud against the Lord, against the Holy One of Israel. Therefore shall her young, fall, young men fall in the streets, and all her men of war shall be cut off in that day, saith the Lord. Behold, I am against thee, O thou most proud, saith the Lord God of hosts, for thy day is come time that I will visit thee. And the most proud shall stumble and fall, and none shall raise him up. For I will kindle, kindle a fire in his cities, and it shall devour all, all round about him. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, The children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. All that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. Their Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. He shall thoroughly plead their cause, uh, that he may give them Give rest to the land, and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. A sword is upon the Chaldeans, saith the Lord, and upon the inhabitants of Babylon, and upon her princes, and upon her wise men. A sword is upon the liars, and they shall dote. A sword is upon her mighty men, and they shall be dismayed. A sword is upon their horses, and upon their chariots, and upon all the mingled people that are in the midst of her, and they shall become as a woman. A sword is upon her treasures, and they shall be robbed. A drought is upon her waters, and they shall be dried up, for it is the land of graven images, and they are mad upon their idols. Therefore the wild beasts of the desert, and the wild beasts of the islands shall dwell there, and the owls shall dwell therein, and it shall no more be inhabited for ever, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. As God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and the neighbour cities thereof, saith the Lord, so shall no man abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell therein. Behold, a people shall come from the north, and a great nation, and many kings shall be raised up from the coasts of the earth. And they shall hold the bow and the lance. They are cruel, and will not show mercy. Their voice shall roar like the sea, and they shall ride upon horses, every one put in array, like a man to the battle against thee, O daughter of Babylon. The king of Babylon hath heard the report of them, and his hands waxed feeble. Anguish took hold of him, and pangs as of a woman in travail. Uh, oh, I'll do the analysis in another video, but if if you're familiar with Revelation, you'll you'll be recognizing some of these things, like a woman in travail. That's like Revelation 12. And uh, yeah, behold, and it should be noted, like the as far as the horses coming to battle and things, like the 
the, the modern day armies they still call like their their mobile infantry you know, the the tanks and stuff the, the the jeeps all that type of thing they call them cavalry still and the king of babylon hath heard the report of them and his hands shall wax feeble anguish took hold of him and pangs as of a woman in travail behold he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of jordan and to the habitation of the strong but i will make them suddenly run away from her and who is a chosen man that I may, may appoint over her? For who is like me? And who will appoint me the time? And who is that shepherd that will stand before me? Therefore he the counsel of the Lord, that he hath taken against Babylon and his purposes, that he hath purposed against the land of the Chaldeans, surely the last of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. At the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved, and the cry is heard among the nations." So it's interesting. I find that when I'm reading that, like, it made me, as I'm doing this topic, like I declared rather boldly, perhaps too boldly, that Jerusalem is Mystery Babylon. Because I did a bit of research before I did the first video in this series, and I thought, yeah, it seems to be the case. That makes sense. And the Holy Spirit seemed to be indicating that was that was what was going on, and God hasn't corrected me. And I have asked, please don't let me mislead people. Please don't let me do the wrong thing. If I'm doing the wrong thing, stop me. And I know that in the past, God has stopped me. There's been various ways where God has stopped me putting out videos when I've done the wrong thing. And he, he hasn't. So I'm thinking, well, it seems to be the case that I'm right. But then I'm reading, reading this, Jeremiah 50 and 51. It's confusing because there's a lot of the language. It's, it's really difficult to figure out whether it's talking about you know, back in the day or forward, in, or forward in time. Is it talking about literal Babylon or is it talking about... Um, the Babylon mystery Babylon in the future, like is it, wh wh what's the association being made? And yeah, so the, I found these reading these this morning. You know, re I've read them before, but rereading them this morning, I found it um, challenging. But then I'm going to read uh, Lamentations after this, and you'll see that you know, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things to go through. So that's why I'm putting all the information out there, and then I'll do analysis after that. So Jeremiah 51. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon, and against them that dwell in the midst of them, that rise up against me, a destroying wind, and will send unto Babylon fanners, that shall fan her, and shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble they shall be against her, round about. Against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow, and against him that lifteth himself up in his brigantine, and against him that lifteth himself up in his brigadine, and spare not her young men, destroy ye utterly all her host. Thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that thrust that are thrust through in her streets. For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God, of the Lord of hosts, though the land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Flee out of the midst of Babylon, and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of, of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand, that hath made all the earth drunken. The nations have been drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Howl for her, take balm for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. So it's interesting, these verses, these ones, the... Uh, so we've got the you know the land filled with sin, but they need to flee out of Babylon. With you know told to flee out of Babylon in where is it? Is it Revelation? Yeah, it is in Revelation. And you know deliver every man his soul. Lord will have vengeance. Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. There's that symbology as well. You know the great whore of Babylon has the the golden cup, drunken. You know, the, all the nations have drunk of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen, destroyed. You know, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. And then you howl for her, take balm for her pain. It's interesting. There are all these connections, but then it's talking about you know, in the, the beginning there. Uh, Israel hath not been forsaken, nor did Judah of his God. Though the land was filled with sin against the Holy One. So it, it, it's what I'm saying. It's puzzling to try and figure this out. So I don't know. I don't know. I'll talk about it in a future video. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her, and let us go every one unto his own country, in his own country, for her judgment reacheth unto heaven, and is lifted up even to the skies. 
The Lord hath brought forth righteousness. Come, and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord hath raised up the spirit of the king, kings of the Medes for his device against Babylon, to destroy it, because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. Uh, set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set up the watchmen. Prepare the ambushes. For the Lord hath both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come, and the measure of thy covetousness. The Lord of hosts has sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men, as with caterpillars, and they shall lift up a shout against thee. He hath made the earth by his power, he hath established the world by his wisdom, he hath stretched out the heavens by his understanding. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causeth the vapours to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain, he bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. Every man is brutish by his knowledge, every founder is confounded by the graven image, image. for his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. They are vanity, the work of errors. In the time of their visitation they shall perish. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war, for with thee I will break in pieces the nations, and with thee I will destroy kingdoms. And with thee I will break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with thee I will break in pieces the chariot and his rider. With thee also I will break in pieces man and woman, and with thee I will break in pieces old and young. And with thee I will break in pieces the young man and the maid, and I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock. And with thee I will break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen. And with thee I will break in pieces captains and rulers. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all the, their evil that they have done in Zion. In your sight, saith the Lord. In Zion, they've done evil in Zion which the old Babylonians did as well. They destroyed the temple and such and stole all the, the copper and the brass and all that stuff. So they did that back in the day as well. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroyeth, destroyest all the earth. And I will stretch out mine hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks and I will make thee a burnt mountain. A burn, burning mountain gets thrown into the ocean in uh, Revelation as well. So that's interesting. Which makes me think that maybe Babylon is a spiritual thing. Maybe it's up in... Well, it is a spiritual thing. Because when we've seen how you know, Jerusalem's compared spiritually to Egypt and Sodom. So it's a spiritual thing, but it's all confusing. It's all confusing, isn't it? Well, I find it confusing. There's so many pieces here. And they shall not take thee a stone for a corner, nor a stone for foundations, but thou shalt be desolate for ever, saith the Lord. Set ye up a standard in the land, blow the trumpet among the nations, prepare the nations against her, call together against her the kingdoms of Arawat, Ararat, Mini, and Ashkenaz. Appoint a captain against her, cause the horses to come up against come up as the rough caterpillars. Prepare against her the nations with the king kings of the Medes, the captains thereof, and all the rulers thereof, and all the land of his dominion. And all the land shall tremble and sorrow, for every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon, to make the land of Babylon a desolation without inhabitant. The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight. They have remained in their holds. Their might hath failed. They became as women. They have burned their dwelling places. Her bars are broken. One post shall run to meet another, one messenger to meet another, to show the king of Babylon that his city is taken at one end. And and that the passages are stopped, and, and the reeds that they have burned with fire, and the men of war are affrighted. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor. It is time to thresh her, yet a little while, and the time of her harvest shall come. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, hath devoured me, he hath crushed me, he hath made an empty vessel, made me an empty vessel, he hath swallowed me up like a dragon. He hath filled his belly with my delicacies. He hath cast me out. The violence done to me and to my flesh be upon Babylon, shall the inhabitant of Zion say, and my blood upon the inhabitants of Chaldea, shall, shall Jerusalem say. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will plead thy cause, and take vengeance for thee, and I will dry up her sea, and make her springs dry. And Babylon shall become heaps, a dwelling place for dragons, an astonishment, and an hissing without inhabitant. They shall roar together like lions, and they shall yell as lions whelps. 
In their heat I will make their feasts, and I will make them drunken, that they may rejoice, and sleep a perpetual sleep, and not wake, saith the Lord. And I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams with the he goats. Uh, with he goats. How is Sheshak, remember Sheshak being a, sort of a code word for Babylon, how is Sheshak taken, and how is the praise of the whole earth surprised? How is Babylon become an astonishment among the nations? The sea is come up upon Babylon. She is covered with the multitude of the waves thereof. Her cities are a desolation, a dry land, and a wilderness, a land wherein no man dwelleth, neither doth any son of man pass thereby. And I will punish Baal in Babylon, and I will bring forth out of his mouth that which he hath swallowed up, and the nations shall not flow together any more unto him. Yea, the wall of Babylon shall fall. It seems definitely to be talking about the literal Babylon back in the day at this bit. My people, go ye out of the midst of her, and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. So because it seems to be talking about, you know, we've got in the, in Revelation as well, it talks about, you know, coming out of Babylon and, you know, not, not being partaking of her plagues or her punishments. And back in the day, it was also saying the same thing, because it's definitely in this bit here in 44 and 45, seems to be talking about the Babylon back in the day, you know, the Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon. So it's just interesting, you know, as I'm saying, it's, there's definite parallels here, but if the modern Babylon doesn't exist. So what does this all mean? It's all very confusing. Of course, in chapter, uh, verse 43 as well, it's, her cities are a desolation, a dry land. So it's talking about multiple cities there. But then it talks about mystery Babylon is sitting on many waters as well. So it's confusing. It's a mystery, isn't it? People go out in the midst of her, and lest your heart faint, and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land. A rumor shall both come one year, and after that in another year shall come a rumor, and violence in the land, ruler against ruler. Therefore, behold, the days come, that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon, and her whole land shall be confounded, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Then the heaven and the earth, and all that is therein, shall sing for Babylon, and the spoilers shall come upon her from the north, saith the Lord. As Babylon hath caused the slain of Israel to fall, so at Babylon shall fall the slain of all the earth. All the earth shall fall at the slain of Babylon. Did that happen back in Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon? Or it sound, That sounds like something that's going to happen in the future. It sounds like something that's going to happen when God gathers all the nations together around Jerusalem so that he can, you know, Jesus can destroy the armies of the nations of the world with the sword of his mouth. That's what that sounds like to me. Ye that have escaped the sword, go away and stand not still. Remember the Lord afar off, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. We are confounded, because we have heard reproach. Shame hath covered our, covered our faces, for strangers are coming to the sanctuaries of the Lord's house. Wherefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will do judgment upon her graven images, and through all her land the wounded shall groan. Though Babylon should mount up to heaven, and though she should fortify the height of her strength, Yet from me shall spoilers come unto her, saith the Lord. A sound of a cry cometh from Babylon, a great destruction from the land of the Chaldeans, because the Lord hath spoiled Babylon, and destroyed out of her the great voice, when the waves do roar like great waters. A noise of their voice is uttered, because the spoiler is come upon her, even upon Babylon, and her mighty men are taken, every one of their bows broken, and the Lord God recompenses of recompenses shall surely requite. And I will make drunk her princes and her wise men, her captains and her rulers and her mighty men. And they shall sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake, saith the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the broad walls of Babylon shall be utterly broken, and her high gates shall be burned with fire. And the people shall labor in vain, and the folk in the fire, and they shall be weary. The word which Jeremiah spoke, uh, or the prophet commanded Sarahiah, the son of Neriah, the son of Masaiah, uh, when he went with Zedekiah, the king of Judah, into Babylon in the fourth year of his reign. And Sarahiah was a quiet prince. Was a quiet prince. So Jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that shall come upon Babylon, even all these words that are written against Babylon. And Jeremiah said to Sarahiah, When thou comest to Babylon, and shalt see, and shall read all these words, then shalt thou say, O Lord, thou hast spoken against this place, to cut it off, that none shall remain in it, neither man nor beast, but it shall be desolate forever. And it shall be when thou hast 
hath made an end of reading this book, that thou shalt bind a stone to it, and cast it into the midst of the Euphrates. Thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink, and shall not rise from the evil that I will bring upon her. And they shall be weary. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. So that was a long chapter. Um, I'm not going to read everything I was planning to read, because this will be too long a video. So what I will do is I will I'll read... Jeremiah 52, I was going to read just a bit of that, 17 verses, and then I'll leave Lamentations for the next video and just do another short video after that. So, yeah, Lamentations 25, just to finish it off. Zedekiah was one and twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was, mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. And he did that which was evil in the sight, in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. For through the anger of the Lord it came to pass in Jerusalem and Judah, till he had cast them out from his presence, that Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon came, he and all his army, against Jerusalem, and he pitched against it and built forts against it round about. So the city was besieged unto the eleventh year of Zedekiah. And in the fourth month, in the ninth day of the month, the famine was sore in the city, so that there was no bread for the people in the land. Then the city was broken up, and all the men of war fled, and went forth out of the city by night, by night, by the way of the gate between the two walls, which was by the king's garden. Now the Chaldeans were by the city round about, and they went by the way of the plain. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued after the king, and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho, and all his army was scattered from him. And they took the king and carried him up unto the king of Babylon in Riblah, in the land of Hamath, where he gave judgment upon him. And the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes, and he slew also the princes of Judah in Riblah. And he put, the, put out the eyes of Zedekiah, and the king of Babylon bound him in chains, and carried him to Babylon, and put him in prison till the day of his death. Now in the fifth month, in the tenth day of the month, which was the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, which served the king of Babylon in Jerusalem. And burned the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem, and all the houses of the great men, burned he with fire. And all the army of the Chaldeans that were with the captain of the guard, break down all the walls of Jerusalem round about. Round about. Then Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away, the captain of cert, carried away captive certain of the poor of the people, and the residue of the people that remained in the city, and those that fell away, and that fell to the king of Babylon. And the rest... Of the multitude. But Nebuzaradan, Nebu the captain of the guard, left certain of the poor of the land for vine dressers and for husbandmen. Also the pillars of brass that were in the house of the Lord, and the bases and the brazen sea that was in the house of the Lord, the Chaldeans break and carried all the brass of them to Babylon, and they took some other things from the temple as well. So just briefly before this cuts off, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll read some more in the next video. This uh, helped you. May Jesus bless you and lead you to the truth. Amen.